Allow me to tell you a story, a story of friendship, a story of unbridled dreams, a story of passion, and a story of overwhelming sadness and grief. Once upon a time, there were several friends, all chit-chatting on their local repeater. As the story goes, no one knows for sure if it was a GMRS repeater or a ham repeater, because that is irrelevant to the narrative. But in this group of friends, there was one boy that did not know the repeater tone, the password, if you will, required to make use of the repeater. And he was very, very sad because without the repeater tone, he could not join in on all the radio dork games. My friend, if that story sounds a little bit too familiar, then fear not, for verily I say unto you, I am going to tell you how to get that repeater tone when none of your friends will give it to you. I will break this video into three halves. The first half you have already watched. The second half will be the technical introduction and overview of where in the air the repeater tone resides. And the third half will be a demonstration of actually capturing the tone using this Bufwang UV5R radio, although you can do it with pretty much any GMRS or ham radio. Now I am fully aware that for this half of the video, some people are probably already furiously banging their fingers against their keyboards, trying to be the first to screech out a complaint that I am giving away the secrets to hack someone's private property repeater. So before I continue, allow me to clarify a few things. First of all, it is true that repeaters are indeed almost always private property, and it is always considerate to not use said repeater without permission of the guy who owns the repeater, the guy who spent all of the money and time and effort to make the repeater available. And should the repeater owner ever ask you to stop using his or her repeater, you should take the hint and stop using it. The point here is, if a repeater owner asks you to not use his or her repeater, or if the repeater owner has publicly listed the repeater as a private repeater, then please do not be a dickhead and just move along. Second of all, what I am about to reveal is no secret, and anyone that is capable of putting two and two together and knows how to configure a repeater can just simply do the math and figure this all out by themselves. So consider this a math lesson. To get a repeater tone, you do not, not, simply scan the tone while listening to the repeater. This is a big mistake that many people new to the exciting and dynamic world of radios often make. And this is because scanning the tone while listening to the repeater will give you the repeater's output tone. The output tone is the optional tone that can be used to limit noise while listening to the repeater, and it is not necessarily the same as the input tone for the repeater. It is the input tone that your radio needs to transmit to the repeater to make use of it. And to get that input tone, which I just mentioned only a moment ago, is the tone that actually activates the repeater so that you can make use of it, you must scan the input frequency of said repeater. And to do that, you must be within direct radio range of someone that is currently using the repeater. You can then use the tone scanning feature available on most radios, which I will show you in the upcoming third half of this video. You can use that tone feature on your radio to scan that input frequency. Allow me to elaborate. The input frequency on a GMRS repeater is always always going to be five my gigahertz higher than the output frequency, which is the frequency that you listen to the repeater on. In other words, if you listen to the repeater on 462.550 my gigahertz, then the input frequency will always, always be 467. 550 my gigahertz. However, for a ham radio, that input frequency could be anything. So Good luck with that. If you are using a GMRS radio and you do not know the frequency of the repeater because on a GMRS radio all you have is channels, 
Then you will have to resort to your Google machine to look up what that channel's corresponding frequencies are. And I'm sure that you probably already knew that. Right? Now that you have the input frequency, we can progress to the fourth half of this educational video. As previously mentioned, for this demonstration, I will be using the Boofwang UV5R radio, but you can do this on virtually any ham or GMRS radio that supports tone scanning. I'm only using the Boofwang UV5R because it is by far the most popular radio ever invented and more people own a Boofwang UV5R than all other radios combined. The basic steps will be the same on all radios, but for the Pacifics of how to use the tone scanning feature for your Pacific radio, you will probably have to consult the user manual. The very user manual that you have probably never even looked at and already threw into the trash respectacle. The first step for scanning for a tone is to ensure that the radio is powered on. You then need to enter the input frequency that I mentioned only moments ago on your radio and on most radios. This means that you must be in VFO or direct entry mode. Now this next part is the confoculating part because the Boofwang UV5R can only scan for either CTCSS tones or DTC DPL tones. It cannot scan for both at the same time. So you will first have to scan through searching for one type. It does not matter which one you choose first. Then if it does not find the tone, you scan through the other type. Those two types being CTCS or CTC tones, the other type being DTC, DPL, DCS tones. So for my example, I will begin by scanning for DTC, DPL, DCS tones first. By the way, funny story, DTC, DPL, and DCS tones are all the same thing. Those are all just different names for the exact same type of tone. So first I will go into the menu settings by pressing the menu button, and I will find the receive DCS tone menu setting and enter a random tone. Any tone, it does not matter what tone you enter, but on a Boofwang UV5R, you must enter a tone because the idiot at the Boofwang factory of Japan that designed this feature is apparently not very good at his job. So I will enter a random tone, any tone, and save it. You then go back into that very same menu Hit the menu button once so that the cursor drops down to the tone entry line and then tap the scan button. And the radio will begin scanning for tones and you will see that the little DCS indicator will flash on the screen. If you wait too long, it will stop flashing and stop scanning and you'll have to do it all over again. And as the radio is scanning, when the radio hears a transmission, and remember, you must be in direct range of someone transmitting to the repeater, it is this transmission that the radio will scan and get the transmission tone from. When it finds the tone, the scanning will stop, and that is your transmit tone. You then program that tone into your channel for that repeater and join in chatting with all of your friends who will probably go to another repeater as soon as they realize that you have figured out the tone. If the radio did not find the tone, then switch to the CTCSS menu and repeat the same procedure. And then finally, one more very important step. Make sure that you go into the menu option and enable your Roger Beep. 